X Niger here with you one more time. Wait, no, wait, one more time. What? I'm only what? No, I got plenty of time. All right, so recheck. <laughs> All right, so once I got my thing settled, so you want to make a mod pack, but you don't know how. That's fine. Whatever. We'll teach you. So, Technic Launcher has been one of the leading things to use for making a mod pack, and I kind of want to go with how to make one for the Technic Launcher, and for it to kind of come up as looking decent. Um, I do have two people, I guess, that you could say. I do know them, and they created a pack, and this is what it looks like. Um, you can see there for who updated it, that is actually uh, one of the partnered owners. It's him and another personnel. And then this is their name. They picked Tech Crusaders. Uh, you can tell that they've made it, which is nice. But they're missing a few things. If you look at this one, this is my development. Now you see things. Now you don't see things. They're missing a couple photo things, um, a background, a little logo, an icon. I mean, come on, they're using the regular Technic icon. I have my own icon, I have my own little background and a little cover image cover image could be better you know the circle could have been a full circle you know something to blend in but it's a little choppy it's fine but it's there um so you know you you put in about your mod pack you have all your information right here your blah 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 love this pack join this pack we want new members come join us blah 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 you can put your discord in there which is really nice um and then here's all your updates and then that's kind of what you want things to look like. But you first want to make the mod pack so that you can actually install something and play it just like this and being able to play it single player and do stuff. Yeah, that's Sky Factory 4. It's the bomb. But back to the point. So if you want to make a Technic Launcher mod pack, here's my current one that I work on constantly. These are all the files. I have a preset file layout. That way, if I want to change something, I can change it in there. It's already there. And I don't ever have to worry about constantly copying and pasting and accidentally doing something wrong, accidentally putting a plugin in the mods like I'm not supposed to, you know, because you want to keep it matching with the server. So I have this copy right here that I constantly work on. And every time I want to make a change that needs to be client and server side, I make sure that it only happens the way it's supposed to happen. Because I don't want to accidentally mix things in the server onto the client side if they're not supposed to be there, AKA a plugin or a plugin file. It just wouldn't make sense. It would not run on the single player side. And it can cause the download to be messy. There's two ways of doing this Technic Launcher. Solder.io, if you're already doing that, then you probably don't need my help. Just, I'm going to be honest with you. But if you're not doing that and you're doing it the other way that most most people in some ways start to do would be using the Dropbox form. Not necessarily even Dropbox, but the online download version, which is you create a zip file for the download. You put the zip file up online somewhere or wherever and you create a download link for it and then you create the download link and you put it onto the Technic Launcher's website under your mod pack area. Um, we'll go into that where I can physically, wow, physically? Physically show you guys and that way you have uh, an eyes understanding, literally eyes. So you go here and this is my folders. That's because of what I have in the pack. Typically, when you make your mod pack, if you're doing this whole Dropbox Online version, then you're going to at least need a bin folder, your config file folder, and then your mods folder. But I always recommend that if you have a server with your mod pack, that you get the servers.data file. 
easy to do that you just if you have the mod pack on your end already open and you have the server in there then you just go to the files for that mod pack you have opened and then you go in. when you go in there you'll see the servers.data file you can actually just go ahead and copy that stick it in here from there to create the zip file which most everyone already knows but i'm going to show you for the sake of that's why a tutorial is a tutorial you can Go ahead and click your control button and then click that, click the bin, click the config, and click the mods folder. And then from there, you just send it to the compress zip to archive it if you're using the other Windows zip stuff. I don't have it on here because I was lazy and decided not to download it because, well, I updated the computer and, yeah, no one wants my personal life. So that's just where I'm going to keep it at. But once this gets compressed or zipped, you are going to see that it's going to pop up, depending on how you zipped it, but in my case, um, it'll pop up as the name of the selected file that I started the zip from. So I may have right clicked like the config file and then clicked like zip, so it's going like, to copy the name. But from here it says I right clicked the servers.data file, so it kind of copied the name over and called it servers. But what you can do is if you press F2, you can select it or you can go ahead and click it once and then click it again, change the name. But you usually want to change it to whatever your mod pack is. So if I was naming this mod pack, uh, it's a YouTube tutorial. So I could name it YouTube tutorial. And then you could do something like a dash because dash, why not? Oh, wait, I can't spell. Ta-da, done. You can name it that if you want to. But just make sure that the name matches because what I found with this mod pack that I've been helping the developers design is this says Tech Crusaders. You see that, I see that. But what happens is when I go into my files for Tech Crusaders, which that's not it because I'm dumb, but I can find it in like 2.2 seconds. So if I go to look for that mod pack which is tech crusaders you know i go over to my app data roaming and then my technic files so once i go there i'm like okay i'm looking for uh what was it again oh yeah tech crusaders cool so i come back here and i'm like um i don't see it unless you see it i don't see it i see mine and then i just see this one well, okay, I only have two downloaded. That would make sense for it to be this one, but it's not the same name. So you can see why this gets confusing. This is why you should have this the same name so that when people go in here and they're like, yeah, cool, Tech Crusaders, they can be like, oh, yeah, there's Tech Crusaders. Instead, they're like, Toon's Mystical Mod Pack. The only way for them to figure that out is that they either have one or none, or they come here and say, oh, look, this says Toon Cra the God. That means this must be his. That's the only way to figure that out. So I recommend that when you make a mod pack and you zip it, you name it the same file. So if we were trying to mimic this one, you would go into here and then you would change it and do tech dash. And then because he spelt it wrong, I'm going to spell it wrong like this person did and do crusaders. Therefore, it's now tech crusaders. And then from there, what you're going to do, is you're going to go to Google. and the way we're going to do this is from the Dropbox version. So you go to dropbox.com and you go to your files and then you just hope that stupid shit doesn't pop up. See, this is how I have mine running as well. So from here, you actually just go ahead and you take this and you drag it in here and you drop it and it will install. From there, what's going to happen is it'll be there. And then you want to click share. So you click share and then stupid crap pops up. That's amazing. No. So you click share and you're going to see down here it will say something like create a link or something around those lines. So then you want to create the link and your link will be created and then you want to copy link. Once you copy the link, you want to go over to the Technic web page uh, because mine's automatic to go to here. That's what's going to happen. But Typically, what's going to happen is it's going to take you to Technic, the web page. 
And if you don't know where that is, it says it right here, technimpact.net forward slash dashboard. So if you go here, you go to your mod packs, given that you've already created a mod pack, and then you want to click into there. So then you click into the, and then from there, you can kind of scroll down a little bit down here. It says edit mod pack. Click edit mod pack and you go to mod pack settings. It's kind of a default. It's already there. You can put your mod pack name. There's a name. Mod pack location. Now this is where you're going to one, two, three, delete it, and then you're going to copy the link. So you would do control copy, and then it would put that in there, and then it would do zero at the end. You actually want to go ahead and remove the zero at the end and put in a number one because that what's going to happen is they're going to click play and it's going to download it. They need to download one, not zero. So it downloads and they can start playing it. But other settings could be putting in your Minecraft version, uh, enabling this option of removing your mod pack from the indexes or force direct change. Uh, I don't even play with this, but it says enables this option will force your mod pack to be installed outside of the default launcher directory. Example is percentage app data percentage slash dot technic. Um, you have mod pack mod pack tags if I could speak English this one I have tech magic 112.2 and Nova you can do it you can't do it it's up to you it just says here that mod pack tags will help you get your mod pack noticed in search results try tagging your mod pack with mod names or with the type of mod pack example adventure you can only have a maximum of six tags so choose wisely you can put your mod pack website as you can tell I have a website but that's not it it's actually Nova in genetics dot org because you know we're cool like that so that's our website you can click that it is a server pack so it pops up on technica saying a server pack um package yeah some people have it some people don't more settings and then your discord server id how you do that is you go over to your discord and you're copying the id of your server your discord server um and then you just paste it in here and you update the mod pack from there, you can go and click on stupid shit again like that, or actually go back to where you're supposed to go on versions. Click versions, and this is where you can update your pack. You put the version number here, and this is every time you install into that Dropbox. So in order to update the pack, you have to remove that Dropbox file and then put in your new file from when you made changes to those files. So you go here, put in the version number, put in a change log of what you did, and then it posts. And then here you see all of it. And what happens is it ends up looking a little bit like what you're about to see on the change log page of the website. So this one says my pack name has been updated to this version name. And then here is where I did all the change log typing. And you see it's just, it's, it's long. That's all my mods. It's my Forge and Sponge Forge versions. That's the screenshots we add into the pack for people to, I guess, have see screenshots because why not? Um, and then I have some empty slots. It happens. It's okay. There's no changes to the config file. That's fine. And then you see here's another old one. Um, you know, it says this mod was removed. This mod was added. And then that's what these are the currently what mods are all in here. A huge long freaking darn old list. And then here you go again with the forge and sponge. And then more screenshots because, you know, they're the same thing. And no config changes. And if I did have a config change, I probably would have written it in here somewhere, but obviously my lazy self had no config changes until here. Item blacklist. Well, I removed that. So um, that's kind of what the change log looks like whenever you do the updated versions. Uh, hopefully that helps because, like I said, you create the link, put it into your mod pack settings, and it's all there. Uh, other things you could do to the website because you know this website's kind of how you can see information of your mod pack um, you can put the overview information here um, you can click updates you can see that this posts the updates and when they're updated and then if you click it it actually takes you to the change log to see more in depth there's a help page you know you can design your help page permissions well it has to do with permissions of the mod pack, what you allow players to do with your mod pack, or play your mod pack, or don't play your mod pack, change log, or discussion. You can discuss, ask questions, or post on the mod pack page. Um, also, with Discord being connected, it shows, you know, Discord and all the members online and everything. Um, 
not sure where oh, I right hear visit mod pack website you can do that too and then of course for members I want to install the pack but can't seem to search it in the Technic launcher right here they can actually click install this mod pack and copy and paste this code and then stick the code up into here and then it'll pull it up um, that's pretty simple how to you know how to post up a mod pack now um, like I said for for myself as this goes I have all of these because, you know, I have custom scripts. We have given them screenshots, um, resources, because I have a custom main menu. So these resources are actually what is changing what the main menu looks like. So if I click to show the images, these are all the images that pop up on the main menu. And they're oriented in a certain type of fashion, depending on what I edit it to be like. So of course that has to go in there. These are all the mods. The journey map, because this journey map has a lot of uh, map storage data, I simply have put it in there for people to have that pre-updating. That way when they join, they have a map. It's not like necessarily empty. Um, that's kind of just a courtesy thing because every time you update, if you have journey map, every time you update your pack, it kind of removes journey map. So I'm giving them a journey map. Um, doesn't necessarily have everything on there. It could be wrong. It might, but it does have something on there. <laughs> config, obviously, when you have certain custom configurations done that remove certain things in the game and you don't want them having, it's going to not only affect server, but it's also going to affect the uh, mod pack single player play as well. So if I have certain items that are removed from the game because I wanted to remove, remove them from the server and I do it through the mod pack and I change it from the server, so the configurations are both removing items, then they're not going to have them on single player or the server. But other options have been that for certain configurations, if you're removing items and you want it off the server, but you want it on the mod pack and let them dick with it on single player, all that you want, then what you would do is go ahead and ban it on the server and then it's still on the single player world. I can use it, play it, do whatever on the single player world. You've pretty much solved that whole problem. Um, the bin is going to be your main jar files, Minecraft and mod pack. So make sure the version you're running is the appropriate version. So this one is Minecraft 1.12.2. It's just nicknamed Minecraft. And then for your forge, when you download the proper forge, whatever version you want to run, make sure obviously it's for the same version of Minecraft. And then it's the version of that forge that you want to run. Um, I'm not going to tell you which version it is because that's your choice. But you nicknamed it. I nicknamed it Mod Pack. And it runs. That's usually what everyone wants to do is nickname it Mod Pack and then they make it Minecraft. And then there you go. Um, you have that in your bin. That way when they download it, that Minecraft and that Forge work together and they run. Um, there's also tutorial links on the Technic webpage about how to do it. You can search it up if you want. Um, it's up to you. There's a Technic Discord uh, link and everything that you can pretty much go to as well and talk to them, ask them questions, but they can be pretty busy sometimes. So um, hopefully this kind of helps you guys get started with your mod packs. And then other than that, if you guys have any questions of things for this, then please leave it like below. If there's some information I may have forgotten or I went over super quickly and you want to add to it, again, put it in the comments below. Not all my tutorials are made to be the 100% best answer. These are just ways of doing it. They're ways of getting it done, not ways that you necessarily should do it or are supposed to do it. It just, it works and it's not a bad thing. Um, so again, a lot of people are going to put their comments below. They're going to say they think this is going to work better. That's going to work better. That's absolutely a good thing. It lets other people learn. It may let me learn or maybe I know it. And I didn't go over it on purpose. So, all right, guys, I'll see you next time around. You guys have yourself in a fabulous rest of the week. I think it's like Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm pretty much behind on my days. I will see you guys around. Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me.